Pete, I was curious if you could also uh, talk about uh, the rules of editing um, and what's really uh, off limits. Uh, everyone knows that Situation Room photo uh, that you took uh, of the day of the Bin Laden raid, but there were some things on the table that uh, were not for the public to see. And how did you handle that situation? We, we, we had a, a, a rule that, that I uh, instituted, which was that um, we would only, uh, in terms of uh, editing, I think you're talking about the use of Photoshop. There's accepted practices where you adjust shadows and highlights and color balance. And that's about all we ever did. We didn't ever want to like, uh, as has already happened with the current administration where they've made his fingers longer and <laughs> made his, no, I'm, I'm not joking. They, there's documented evidence that they've done this to photos. They've made his shoulders smaller and things like that. We didn't ever mess with any content. The Situation Room photo was a unique uh, situation, no pun intended, where there was a classified document on the table in front of Hillary Clinton and um, we didn't know what to do about it. When the, the uh, White House said, we want to release some photos from that day, I chose the photos. I think there were seven that we ended up releasing. And that particular one, I remember walking into Ben Rhodes. He was the Deputy National Security Advisor, his office. And I go, um, is, is this a problem? meaning this document on the table. And he said, I think so, why don't you go talk to John Brennan? And John Brennan was the Homeland Security Advisor. And I walked in, John's office happened to be next to mine in the West Wing. I showed him the photo, I said, John, is this like a problem? And he goes, I don't know, let's go talk to Mike Morell. Mike Morell <laughs> was the Deputy CIA Director, this is the day after the Bin Laden raid. He was in the Situation Room having a meeting and John and I walk into the Situation Room, right in the middle of this meeting, and I show Mike the photo, and I said, Mike, is this a problem? Is this a classified document? And he said, yes. And me, being a little naive, said, can we declassify it? And he looked at me and he said, <laughs> he answer. said, no. <laughs> and I was thought for about three seconds, and I said, well, what if we pixelize the document, like blurred it, and he said, I would be okay with that, just show it to John Brennan before you make it public. Uh, so that's what we did. And in the, when, 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 we released the, when we released the photo to the public, I personally wrote the caption, uh, and the, the second line of the caption was something to the effect of uh, a classified document on the table in front of Hillary Clinton has purposely been blurred. And people accepted that because we were transparent about it. It's the only time we ever did that. That picture never would have been made public uh, otherwise. And to this day, it's still classified. I actually made overtures the last year of the administration to see if they could declassify the document. But it, as of, <coughs> who knows now what's going on with classification. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the, the backstory to that. Lindsey, Brian, uh, same question. Uh, what's off limits in terms of, of editing uh, when you're out in the field? You know, I think Pete touched on something really important and that's transparency. I think that it's really important, um, you know, what's off limits is altering a photograph. I think, but in Pete's case, it was a very particular case and he wrote it in the caption and that's that. You know, I think I've been, um, I remember I did a two month stint in the Korangal Valley in Afghanistan uh, which was one of the most dangerous places in Afghanistan at the time. This is in 2007. It was where the U.S. military was dropping the most bombs in the country, and many Afghan civilians were getting killed. And so we went in for the New York Times Magazine to understand the nature of the war there and why so many civilians were dying. And so uh, one of the first things, first of all, they were very ambivalent about letting two women into the Korangal Valley because they said, like, there's no place for you to sleep or go to the bathroom. Where are you going to be? There are no women. And we convinced them that we could actually sleep and go to the bathroom where the men do it, that we were capable. <laughs> and so they let us go. And when we got there, the first thing they did was send us to the Tactical Operations Center. And that's where all the officers and higher-ups up, higher 
go to make the decisions to drop the bombs. All G2 military intelligence was there. And of course, as you can imagine, that entire room was classified because there, there were maps everywhere, drone feeds, uh, heat censored feeds, everything. And so it was the first and only time in my career where I actually let military intelligence look at my photographs before sending them out because they let me into this totally classified room. So they never would have let me in if they didn't trust me. And so I tried to shake the camera, make them blurry, blur intentionally those maps. And so it was one of those cases. And I think, you know, in our, there are some times in our career where things will be totally off limits unless you come to some sort of compromise.